So as we get going, um, here's a little bit about Zoom. The first thing I would really helpful for me is if you could rename yourselves. Um, and so if you would do first name, last initial, and then either your grade or content level. And so for example, I'm Julie E and I'm in the library. Um, how do you rename yourself? When you click on the participants window, um, that is the easiest way to do it. And so if you go down to the bottom of your screen, um, you should see the participants, which is the um, the people. Um, and so it looks like the little, little people icon. Once you click on that, it's going to open up in a new window. And with that new window, you can um, mouse over your name, see the more, click on that, and then you can rename. So I'll give you guys a couple seconds to rename yourself so that we can, um, so I can easily um, know who you are. And also, um, it's just a little easier when we're looking at. Awesome, Sandra, I love it. Awesome, Tani, Sandy, Tammy, Rex. It's just so good to see your names because I've seen your names all summer long in these classes. So it's nice to see you guys. Awesome, Haley. So what you're doing is you are mousing over um, the bottom of your screen and you should see the participants um, in those icons that come up. Um, click on participants and then um, It'll open up a little window with all the names of everybody in the group and find your name, which should be at the top. And then when you mouse over more, you can rename yourself. Thanks, Rochelle. Awesome, Ben. Awesome, Rochelle. Do I have two Rochelles? I I have a, a Rasha. Oh, Mindy, thank you. Awesome, you guys. Thank you so much. Julie, I have to go help some people get on. I'll be right back. Okay, that sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, this is Brian, and I'm having trouble here finding out where to where, how to get to rename and all that stuff. All right. Um, and so. Do you see your participants tab? I see just Julie Erickson and then Hinman B. Um, what are you on? What kind of device are you on? I'm on a it's HP or Dell. You're on a okay. Are you on a Chromebook or on a on a computer? We're gonna figure this out. Brian, come back to my room. I'll help you. Okay. I guess I'll have to go down there. <laughs> You've got people. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to. Yeah, I can go to Lori's. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to um, mute everyone again, just so that we can. Yeah, I tried to click the bot. Maybe oh, I. Go to the very oh, I see. That's what I did wrong. Well, I can do. Can I be right up front of you? <laughs> awesome. Okay, I'm going to mute you all, just so that we don't have any interruptions. You can unmute if you have questions at any time. Okay, so renaming yourself is just, and this is one of those things that when you're working with students too, you can have them rename themselves or you can have the setting that they cannot rename themselves. But it is a lot easier to have you guys rename yourselves because then I can, um, when you ask questions, I know who you are rather than, um, like yesterday I had a, you know, 60173. <laughs> Like I had no idea, and it's hard to you know address them too. So it makes it a little easier when you when you rename yourself. Okay, sound. So this is a big one, um, and so as you are <clears throat> working through sound, 
you're going to see that we have a couple of options here. Um, if you are having issues with your sound, um, you will want to click on the sound, click on the um, little carrot beside your microphone, and then you're going, you can test your speakers and microphone, which is a really great way to make sure that you are, um, like, like when I put my headset on, a lot of times it doesn't switch. Um, and so making sure that I'm using the right speaker and microphone. So if you click the carrot, test speaker and microphone. If there are a whole bunch of you in a room, the easiest thing to do is to have one computer on the audio and the rest of you leave computer audio because then you can um, unmute and talk and you will not have the feedback. So if there's a whole bunch of you in the room, um, select one of you to be the audio and the rest of you leave computer audio so that you do not have that, that feedback. So that is the, um, that is the, speaker um, information. All right, so you guys have been rocking the chat, which makes me happy. Um, and so we've touched on this a little bit, but one of the things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to consider utilizing your um, participants, your, your chat, and um, your participants window um, as we as we go through and so accessing those are all at the bottom of your screen and so you should see all of the little icons um, when i share my screen it will go to full screen in most situations and so you can go in the upper right corner and click um, there should be a broken box there that you can click on to make it go down to um, to, to make it smaller. If that doesn't happen, um, you can also hit the escape key. Um, when you are not in full screen, you can have your participants and your chat um, open beside your, your viewing window, and that can be a really great way to, to navigate to. So <clears throat> as you are utilizing the um, chat and participants, um, that's one way to do that. So chat, um, uh, you guys are still rocking the chat. So um, definitely um, make sure everybody can find Julie? the chat. Yes. You're on, um, Julie? Yes. I have a question real quick. Yep. I don't have all those uh, icons on the bottom of my screen. You had a whole bunch of them there. I have one, two, three, four, five, I think I see. You probably only have unmute your microphone or your camera, uh, yep. participants, chat. Mm -hmm. Share yeah. screen, Record reactions. And react. Record yep. and reaction, yes. Yep. So because this is a screenshot, depending on what role you have in a in a meeting, you will have different different icons. So if you were a the host of this meeting, you would have different icons than you are as a participant. Okay. So thanks for asking that. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's, the chat is where we're going to, um, I'm going to ask you questions throughout the day, but also, we'll, this is, it's a great place to, um, for you to ask me questions and also share ideas. And so go ahead and say good morning in the chat just to make sure that everybody can find the chat real quick. And so do a quick good morning in the chat, please. Good morning. I love it. You guys are just, you guys are really good. You, you've zoomed a lot, I can tell. <laughs> I mean, these are really nice things to work with with your students too, is having that ability to, um, like how can we interact with our learners if we have to be online? Push chat. Okay, so the next thing, <laughs> The next thing um, we're going to look at is our participants window. And I love participants window because it gives us an opportunity for a real quick 
feedback. So you guys were in participants window when you renamed yourselves this morning. And if you go back to participants window, so clicking on the participants icon at the bottom of your window, um, you'll notice at the bottom of the participants window, you have a green check, a red X, um, a go slower, go faster, and so what I would love to know is I'm going to ask you a question and you guys can do yes, no. And so what I want to know is, um, let's see, what do I want to know? Who knew about the participants' um, feedback in, um, in Zoom? So green check. Ah, a bunch of you guys did. Yay. So those of you guys that know about it, did, have you used it with your students? <laughs> the, the yes numbers are going down dramatically. Oh, you haven't used Zoom with students. Okay. So this, um, somebody clicked on the more and they're doing the thumbs up. Okay. Haven't seen students for a long time. Yes, no. So participants, when you click on the participants window, which is the people icon at the bottom of your screen, that'll open up a little window. And at the bottom of that window, you'll see a green check, a red X. And so the question is, have you ever used the participants window with, um, in, in a training or in, in a presentation before? So I've got four of you, five of you, then you <laughs> oh Lori, you have. Do you want to unmute Lori and say how you've used it? No. <laughs> okay. All right. So the participants, um, the feedback in the participants window gives you a really, really great um opportunity to do some real quick um, feedback from your your participants and so I do this a lot because it gives me an opportunity to say when you're done with something go ahead and check the green X or you know who's done this you know or who has questions or you know I mean you can just green it's, it's awesome for yes no questions and then we can expand on it so file that participants window away in your toolbox as something that you can utilize Okay, so that was a real quick intro to Zoom. Um, so you guys have access to that. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to actually look at the welcome letter that you guys got. And I know some of you didn't and some of you have been signing in as we speak. So um, I will forward that out as soon as um, I have you guys do some work real quick. Um, so let me find your letter <laughs> and we'll run through the class code and everything on how to join so the the funny thing is so many of you um, took the Google Classroom course with me, um, but then you didn't, um, you created a class, but you didn't necessarily join a class. And so it's a different, different process. So I'm going to walk us through um, how to join your classroom, because this is one of those things that you'll have to do with students. So and I, um, I will drop the join code in the chat again. I would seriously consider copying and pasting it out of the chat. Because then um, you don't have to worry about typing it or mistyping it. Um, and so what we're going to do is you guys are all logged into Google Classroom on your tzts.us account. So most of you, I, I'm recognizing so many faces. Um, so I know that you guys have taken the Google Classroom course with me already. Um, so you, um, this is, you've done this, but I really want to show you because when you work with your students, um, you'll need to make sure that you, you, help them um, be successful there. And so if you go to classroom.google.com, 
and say go to classroom, it's going to ask me to sign in. And so I need to sign in with my TZTS account. So I, I enter my email address and then I enter my password. I don't remember. Ha, I do remember. Go me. Um, and then that brings me in to the classroom that I have used um, at Tios Bazina. And so when I'm looking at this, um, as, like many of you have noted that you see the class that you created for the Google Classroom course. And yes, that is what you're going to see. To join a class, you need to go up into the upper right hand corner and click on the plus, which is where you created a class this, um, this summer, and say join class. At this point, um, you should see that you are currently signed in and you're going to want to make sure that you are signed in as your TZTS account. The way that Google Classroom is set up, the, uh, the Google Apps account is set up, you cannot join a TZTS Google Classroom with any like with a personal Gmail account or a K-12 account or anything like that. You have to use your TZTS. And so Lori, in your situation, um, when you get to this point, are you seeing that you are signed in as, as you at TZTS? Yes, she can. I can't see where I am though. That's Oh, because you're on the Zoom one. Oh, where am I supposed to be on? So, Lori, when you're signed, um, when you are into Google Classroom and you've signed and, and you are joining a class, does it show that you are currently signed in as um, you at TZTS, or does it have a different different email address that you're signed in as? Julianne? I've joined, um, hold on, okay, unmute you too. Okay, um, it, I do a lot with Google Classroom. I've joined classes, I've made classes, I do a lot. It's not working for me. Okay, that's. I mean, I, I've problem solved as many problem things as I can. Oh, okay, I've that's fine. That, that, that's, that, that's, that's, that's good i mean i'm not good but i mean that good to know um so i just i just wanted to point out that you you do need to make sure you're signed in as you um and the only reason i'm saying that is just because that is one of those things that as students you're going to see an awful lot of because they're going to be in google you can use google classroom in your personal gmail account and so i love that um we can use um, it tells us what account we're signed in as. And so um, Whitney noted that they um, needed to go away, leave it and go in again. So log out and come back in again and try it. Um, then I'd have to remember. Oh, crap. Crap. And this is really great troubleshooting because you are going to have learners that will try to log in with, I mean, they'll be logged in in, a, in an account with their personal and try to get in. Um, and so being able to emphasize this. So I'm really glad that, I mean, I'm sorry you're having issues, but I'm really glad <laughs> that you're having issues because it gives us that capability to um, practice that, okay? This is her screen. Yeah. Um, so let's click this right here, just that one. Mm -hmm. And let's open over here. So I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen real quick. Um, and I'm going to make sure that you guys can all get in. Um, Lori, would you like to share your screen and kind of walk us through what you're doing? Actually, I am um, zooming through my phone. And my laptop is the one that I'm trying to go in. It's a different screen. I, no, I cannot share my screen. <laughs> I can do it here. <laughs> yeah, but it ain't showing mine. Uh -huh. All right, hold on. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> As we do. <laughs> 
Okay, so let me look at my Google Classroom and see where people are. Yes. Where do I go from here, Kim? Yeah, she needs help too. Okay, so who else needs some help? Oh, I know why. Awesome. So I've been getting a number of people in already, so that's that's wonderful. I have a question. Yep. Ms. Patrice, when we're doing this with kids, they have to go through this every time, or can we set up some kind of shortcut? So they don't. Once you join a classroom, it is part of your the classes that show up on your um, Google Classroom page. You have the tiles for every class. And so like you as a teacher, you're going to have the classes that you create. You also have classes that you're part of. Um, your students will have classes that they are part of because they will not be creating. They, can't, they will not have the rights to create a class. One thing that I found that if the code has a bunch of I's or L's or ones, you can refresh it and get rid of those things until you get a code that doesn't have them because the students have a hard time with the L's <laughs> and the I's. I am. <laughs> I'm only I'm only laughing because this morning I made a Google Classroom and and my join code was I don't know if it was an I or an L. <laughs> I'm like making a different one. So totally. <laughs> that is a very good tip. All right, Lori, have you been able to get in? It may have been because I hadn't used this computer in I don't know, 5 months and yeah, I had to log out and log back in. Awesome. Okay. I mean, not awesome, but, but I'm, I'm glad we talked through some of the troubleshooting because these are things that um, like on your phone in many situations, you know, your phone is going to be logged in as a personal account in most, most situations. And so if a student is joining Google Classroom on their phone, you can generally add more than one account, but they will get that kind of error. And so being able to say hey what you know making sure we know what account we're on knowing to re you know log out and log back in those kinds of things can be really beneficial so lori thank you so much for contributing to the <laughs> to the experience you made it better for us all all right so I only have about 21 people in the Google Classroom. So um, if you are not in the Google Classroom, go ahead and click the green check or else, um, or else drop it in the chat just to make sure that you guys, okay. Oh, there she is. So I've got, um, I don't know how to say your name, um, the Dakota language, Ed Edwina. Quincy, Edwina, um, you need help. And so where are you at? And this is the worst, you guys, getting everybody logged in. And once we get everybody doing this, um, it gets much better. I'll All right, I see you. Room, Julie. You what? I'll go down to Cushy Edwina's room. Okay, wonderful. Then, Thank you. You can help me from there. <laughs> I can help you from there. All right, Jenny, let's see if you're in Google Classroom or not. It's behind, um, I see my Google Classroom window behind the Zoom window. Okay, so <clears throat> so Jenny, you say you're pretty sure you're in, and I actually do not see you as one of my students. So let's refresh. Do I have to share with you or? No, um, but let's, yeah, you know what, let's have you share. We'll have you walk through and then Jade, you know, um, so you can't access through your TZTS account. So you'll not be, so you cannot log in to your TZTS account, Jade. Because if that's the case, um, we have Tim in the room and Tim can reset you. So do you want to clarify that, Jade? And Jenny, go ahead and share your screen. You said share my screen? I did. 
Okay. Now I don't know how to do that. Well, we'll learn that too. Um, so <laughs> everybody can look at this. Um, oh, I you, see. You all have the green share screen with the arrow at the bottom of your of your in your with your tools. Um, okay. Um, and so go ahead and click on share, and then you'll want to say screen. And once you click on screen in the upper left, in the lower right of the window that pops up, you'll see a blue share. All right. Tim, we need you. Um, Jade, cannot, Jade cannot access with her um, TZTS account. She cannot log in. So can you fix her? Oh, and when you're in Zoom? Uh oh. So Jackie, I lost. Jackie, you took over Jenny. Jenny, go ahead and share again. Um, and Julie, can you see me, Brian LaBelle? Can I see you? Can you hear? All right, am I in the right spot? <laughs> Um, just a second, let me look. Awesome, Jenny. Okay, so where we want to go right now is you are in Zoom, so go ahead and click on the little plus sign beside the Zoom window. You see the plus sign at the top of your screen? There you go, click on that. Type in classroom. Google.com. All right, go ahead and just scroll on down and click on, there you go, click on, you can click on that, yep. All right, go to classroom, so click on the um, white box where it says go to classroom. And then now you need to log in with your TZTS account. Jenny, can you see me? Awesome, Jenny, you're in. Look at all those classes. Okay, so now what you need to do um, is click on the plus sign in the upper right-hand corner. Oops, I'm sorry. Go back to your classes. So go one tab over. Sorry. All right. Now, um, within this window, you're going to see, um, you see the J in the upper right hand corner. Do you see the J? Yes, I you see it. Okay, um, you may need to move people's heads. Um, and then there's uh, the waffle, and then there is the plus sign. And so if you click on the plus sign, okay, that's going to give you a join or create class. So you're going to join, and your code is? Is it um, the J-H-E? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so for those of us that haven't memorized, I don't. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I love that. All right, hit enter. Or hit join in the upper right hand corner, sorry. And it should let you join. Awesome. All right. And so I've got a couple more things here. Um, Ron, you're saying that you're unable to join. And so I want to make sure that you are, are you logged in? Are you logged in with your TZTS? No, I, I was unable to uh, join the class. It says uh, that the class code is the correct format, but your current account does not have access permission. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have you log out, log back in again. So kind of do what um, Lori did and then try it. And if that doesn't work, drop it in the chat and um, we'll have Tim fix you. Okay. See you later. <laughs> See you later. All right, you guys. <laughs> so how are you guys doing? So Karen... You have the same situation as Ron, so go ahead and check that out and see what's going on. And then, Jackie. Julie, am I in the right area? Let's see. Um, where are you? Max. 
Yes, R. Max. Where are you at? Right here. To the left of you. S. R. Max. Can you see me? I can't. Um, hold on. Oh, S. R. Max. Okay. Yep. So. Did you want to share your screen real quick, or what? What's your question? Did you want to share my screen real fast? Yep. Um. So it's the green at the bottom of your screen. You have a green uh, square with an arrow. There you go. Um. And so now you are. So I'm seeing your screen. Correct. Is this your screen? Yeah. Okay. Do I open this or what? Um, so you are, you've already opened it. And so now oh. what you need to do is click the plus sign beside the um, launch meeting zoom. Go ahead and click that plus sign. Launch meeting zoom, the plus sign. So go on up, um, go up to the top of the window. And so if you're looking at the tabs across the top of your window, you see flipped classroom, Tio Spazina. There you go. Whoops, you stopped sharing. Um, oh. That's okay. Um, you can do it again. Okay, so what I'm going to do with you guys is I need um, a handful of people. I am because um, I'm having issues. Okay, so what I'm going to do with you guys to make sure that we're all in, um, and this will be excellent for working with our with our students in the fall. Come down and join us. Is I'm going to give us. Um, okay, you're, you're in. You're sharing your screen again, Kara. So go ahead, um, and you'll see. Move your mouse up um, to the top above the above the right there. Click on the plus sign. Oops, not. Oh, you can move that that sharing bar. You can move that around. So move that. Okay. So yep, Faith, you are in. That's awesome. Okay, so um, we are going to. I've got about thirty-one students in right now, um, and so what I'm going to do is. We're going to move. Um, if you're not in Google Classroom, um, we will, I'll stay a little bit at the end to make sure that you are. Kara, I do not see you in the Google Classroom, okay? So now Kara, oh, okay. So SR Max, so Sharla, um, you'll need to make a new a new window, um, so you can actually just go go to the menu bar where it's just just move over to the type in a, a search. There you go, and type in classroom.google.com. Yep, perfect. Okay. And. Yeah. So now you need, you're, you're logged into Google. Um, and so I'm not sure where you're at in terms of which account. So let's, where it says create or join your first class, go ahead and click on the plus sign, okay? Click on join class. You may need to move stuff around. There you go. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so this is your Gmail account. Oh, you know what? I love this. Thank you for sharing. I'm not picking on you whatsoever. You are not in the correct account, and that's okay. We'll switch it. So what I want you to do is go up to go up to where it says switch account. It says you are currently signed in as Charlotte Max. So switch account use another account. Now log in as your TZTSU. 
Oh, this is an excellent example. This is what your kids are going to have happen to them, okay? So this is the kind of thing where I'm so glad that we're seeing this because it'll make it much easier when, when you're working with your kiddos. Um, and most of your kiddos will be fine, um, but every now and again you'll have, have I can't join. I can't help you with your password though, sorry. But Tim can, <laughs> right Tim? Okay, All right, so Tim can help you with your password, um, but yeah. basically you were in the right spot. You were logged in with the wrong account. And so, Tim, do you want to help her with her password? Charlie, your password's TZTS2020. Oh. Well, there we go. I love having Tim here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You know what, Lori, that's a really good, um, okay, so Charlotte, this is the first time you've logged in. You will select that you're a teacher. All right, Jade, um, Tim, Jade says that um, they aren't, still aren't able to log in. Okay. Her account yeah. isn't. Um, okay, so now Charlotte, go ahead and click on the plus sign. Move, yep, there you go. Join a class. And now we see your TZTS, and so you can type in the join code. Okay, and go ahead and up in the upper right, click on join. Okay. You're in, awesome. Okay. So yippee skippy, we're doing awesome. Okay, so Lori, thank you for bringing that up um, in terms of you may need to get in the habit of using your, Google, your school password because definitely that is going to um, make it a lot easier um, to, to make sure you're in the right account. Um, and so should you log into Google Classroom and you're not seeing the account, your, your right classes, make sure you, you check and see which account you're in. Okay, so thanks for sharing your screen and I'm going to stop your share. So we are going to move so that we can cover a little bit more content. If you're not in Google Classroom yet, it's not, not, do not panic. Um, I'm gonna um, encourage you to reach out to Tim or, or Mindy and they will help you pull, they will help you get in um, after we're done today. So you can follow along um, and and see what we're doing, okay? So today is, um, so Jack, it doesn't look like you are in the shared class, Jack. Um, so you'll need to make sure that you're, you're logged in, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen. I thought account. I was, Julie, so I, when I hit share screen, I should, I have a Google account. All right, go ahead and share your screen with me. We'll let you okay. share your screen. Share All your right. screen. Show me what you got. Okay. Do you see it? I do. All right. So now okay, you need so, to join our class. And so click on the plus oh, sign. You're okay. Click on so the plus sign. I, I thought I was joined already a class. Okay. You class. are, you are actually, you've made two classes. Well, I mean, I got, yeah, you know, what do you mean two classes? I got geometry and algebra one. Yep. So you have made two classes, but you're going to join a class as a student. And so this is a class that, that I've created for you guys to use. So okay. go ahead and click on the plus where you made classes. You're going to join a class. Okay, so click, click on, on the plus up there. Yep. And now click on join class. Awesome. All right. And so you type in the class code and um, let's see. Everybody else has it memorized. I do not. J H E 
W I M K is the join code. Okay, then join. Now join. Yes. Ooh. Am I good? Um, it looks like it's joining. You are good. Awesome. So okay. now, um, you know what? We're going to use you as a guinea pig. So keep on right. hanging out here. So sure. if you guys go, if, if, if um, we have the menus that we get to hang out with in Google. And so on the left, where it says Tio Spazina Google Classroom, right to the left of that, you see the three lines. We call that our hamburger menu. Okay, you guys? And so that's our hamburger. If you click on the hamburger, you'll see you have lots of options. Um, and this is really great because we'll, if you click on classes, it'll take us back to our classes. Um, calendar will take us to our calendar. If you keep going down, you're going to see the classes that you're teaching. And so in this case, Jack has two classes that he's teaching. And then if you keep on going down the page, you're going to see enrolled. And you see that he is enrolled in one class. And so this is great because not only is he a teacher, he's also a student. Um, and so he'll have that different experience. And so I'm gonna okay. have you go up to the top and click on classes on your, so we went to your hamburger menu and we clicked on classes. And that takes us back to the home page of our, our Google Classroom. And so we can see all the classes that we are teaching and that we're enrolled in. You got to chat to ask her? I, I'm, uh, I asked her. Right. Do, does anybody know where Jade is? No. I mean, anybody from the school know where she physically is? Because <laughs> Tim is trying to find her and she's not in her normal classroom. I don't know where she's at. Okay, he's on the way. Oh, you found her? <laughs> it's like it's like a scavenger hunt different but the same <laughs> okay so thank you for sharing your screen jack and so most of you if you took the google classroom course with me this summer you've made classes but because um you have to have a Tio Spazina account. You can't be a student and a teacher in the same class. Um, so this today and tomorrow, you're going to get that experience of being in a class. Um, so I'm excited for you guys. Awesome. I'm joined as a student. So now you're joined yeah. as a student. Yep. Okay. Uh, Tammy's found Jade. She's in the K2 wing. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Here we are. Um, so now I'm going to take us into Google Classroom as a student. So you've all taken Google Classroom class, which is great, um, or most of you have. And so what we're going to do now is I just want to um, run through some of the interactivity that you can do and also some of the settings because when we take the Google Classroom course, um, there are things that you don't necessarily, we talk about it a little bit, but I really want to make sure that we've, we've looked at it um, in more detail. So with it, within the Google Classroom course, so we're in the Tio Spazina course, so I'm currently sharing the class that you should, most of you are in. Um, we are looking at the stream, which is which is um, where we can have conversation. I've posted a um, I've posted a welcome, um, and then also um, you can see that I posted an assignment here. So there are settings that we can use to control who can post and what is posted on the stream. And so we'll look at that. The next tab over is our classwork tab. That is where you're going to see all of the assignments that we have created. Then I have the people tab. And so as a student, you see the people tab. Um, and that is the last tab you have. As a teacher, I also have a grades tab. And so we can see that um, I have all these different assignments and um, I can see who's turned them in. So let's look at our very first assignment. So when you're on the classwork tab, you have an assignment. 
it is 001 Google Classroom setting up your class. You're going to notice that I have topics. I have a topic set up for our Google Classroom. It is called Set Up Google Classroom. And, excuse me, and um, when I click on the assignment, it is going to show me um, what um, I've, I've asked you guys to do. And so I'm going to go in and view the assignment so you can see it. And then I'm going to have somebody share their screen so we can see how it looks different as the student versus the um, teacher. So this is me looking at an assignment as a teacher. And you're going to see that um, one of the things you want to do is be really consistent. And so you can give in the instructions, you can give as much information as you need to. I like to use the little emojis. Um, so if you right click, there's an emoji keyboard. Um, and so you can find numbers or check marks or whatever um, to kind of give a visual because you cannot format the instructions at all. As we scroll on down the page, you're going to see that I have two attachments on this um, assignment. One of them is a Google Classroom, setting up your classroom, and that is just a, it is just a, a file with lots of instructions. And so this is something that you can come back to and review um, and utilize in the future. Then there's a collaborative, students can edit this file. This is a collaborative file. So we're all editing the same file. And this is your assignment, which many of you have already gotten into, which is wonderful. Um, do make sure you remember to put your name at the top so I know who you are. Um, and th so this is a collaborative assignment that you will all be doing um, and so the instructions are you pick out your empty slide um, write your name at the top and then take a screenshot of your Google Classroom um, and then fill out a little bit of info um, and this is mainly I mean so for all of you that have taken the Google Classroom course these are things that you've already you've already done you've already made the class um, but this is also an opportunity to think a little bit deeper on some of those some of those those areas so this is an assignment um, when I go back, um, you'll see that I've given you the instructions for turning in your homework. You can add private comments to the teacher if, I have, if you have any questions, and then click Mark as Done to submit the assignment. So does anybody want to quick share their screen so that I can um, show you guys what it looks like from the student side? All right, Doc, thank you. All right, so Doc, let's go into our, um, go into our class. So let's go into the Tio Spazina class. Find your assignment. Awesome. Uh-oh. Um, if you've already, did you already turn it in, which is fine. Um, go ahead and click on classwork at the top of your page. So you're going to see different, different things. Why is it spinning like this? I don't know, Doc, what's going on? Okay, so that's you as a teacher. So we're looking at you as a teacher right now. So we wanna get back to you as a student. So go ahead and I'm not sure why we've got that refresh going across the top of the page. That's very disturbing. Can we have um, somebody else share their screen real quick and see? I'm not sure. 
Does somebody else want a quick try sharing your screen? Thank you, Doc. I don't know what's going on. Brian, yay. Okay, so you're in the homework, which is great. So go ahead and go to the classroom. Um, and it looks like you have the, the, the assignment open. So um, go ahead and click on the tab um, for your 001 assignment. So you may have to move the presentation. Do I have to go back then or? No, um, just go up to the top of your window and you can click on, you see the, the tab where you're, you're in the Google Slides. Um, which is this active tab. Okay. And then to the left of that is the 001 and that is your assignment. So just go, one, yep, perfect, okay. Here? Yeah, perfect. So when this, so you can see it looks a lot different as a student, which is, which is kind of frustrating. I mean, just because um, it, you, you don't necessarily see the same structure. So, we have all of our instructions, um, but at the bottom of that, you're going to see class comments. That is something where you as a student or a teacher um, can add comments that the whole class will be able to see. Um, and then, so if you, if you submit that, if you click on the arrow at the right-hand side of that, everybody in the class will see that comment. Um, I want you to scroll up the page again then you're going to see in the upper right, you see your work there. So in this assignment, I just said you could say mark as done. And so you don't need to attach anything or create anything for this assignment. Um, in other assignments, I will say add or create, and then you'll see a turn it in um, button. And so if you do not need your students to attach anything to it, assignment, they can mark it as done. And then there's the private comments, which is right below the mark is done. Um, the private comments, if you click in that private comment, that will be something that is between I think you're signing in as a personal account. You and the teacher. Above and sign out and sign back in as a a Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so that is one of the things that I love about Google Classroom is because oh, oh, doing that. I... because you can do private comments to your teacher um, so that you do not have so so you can ask questions you can um, ask for clarification etc cetera, etc cetera. so um, the private comment can be, um, and then the teacher gets notification on that. So thank you for sharing what it looks like from the student side, because um, it does look a little different. And, I, and that's where you'll notice when I do the assignments for you, I'm very clear about click mark as done or turn it in, depending on what I've done with your assignment. All right. Okay, so thank you for sharing your screen and I'm going to go back and share my screen again. So I'm going to stop your sharing, but thank you very much. Um, so back in our, our class and back in looking at that our work, I'm going to go through and I'm going to select this 001 Google Classroom setting up your classroom file. And so this is something you can follow along. If you've taken the Google Classroom course, you have done this portion. I'm not actually going to go through um, in gory detail the setting up a classroom, okay? So you guys are welcome to follow these instructions. There is a workflow with step-by-step -step instructions, and then there's also the first day with Google Classroom. Um, what you, what I'm, what I'm going to request that you do for this, because we'll be doing different things throughout the, the week, um, is create your Google Classroom. So if you made one for the class already, you can use that. Um, but share the join code with a couple colleagues so that you have that capability to, um, you have that capability to 
see what each other's assignments look like and what it looks like to be a student in the class. So the next thing we're going to actually look at is your settings, notifications, copying, and archiving. I know in the Google Classroom course it talks about archiving your course, um, but the settings and notifications are something that we do not spend a ton of time on, and they are, they are something that can make or break your experience for both you and your students. So in your Google Classroom, and so this is something that is only in your classroom, settings are available when you are in your classroom. So when we're looking at the, the guide, um, you'll see your settings um, is the gear inside each classroom so if you're that you're a teacher of and so if you're a student if you're in the TOS Bazina classroom you will not see the gear okay so just so you know um, this is where we can change our class name and so when we talk about class names you may want to be as specific as possible um, to say you know if you have multiple sections um, if you are a like the music teacher you may want to say that you are um, you know, like, like Mrs. Erickson music, and then in the section or class description, you may want to, for your notification, um, put which section it is. You know, this is kindergarten Mr. Shoe, or, you know, something like that. So you, you can keep track. So you can add as much or as little detail as you want. Now as we scroll around uh, down, this is where, so the class code, and I'm not gonna change it on you guys because you guys all have it memorized, but this is where you can change the class code. And so should we get a class code that's really confusing or really hard um, or has L's or I's in it, you can reset the class code there. Um, and so that will allow your students to reset the code. Our stream. Currently, we are set up so that students can post or comment. So for those of you that use Google Classroom this spring, um, how do you have, do you let students post and comment or how do you manage that? You can drop it in the chat or you can unmute. Um, I'm not like at a spot where I can type in the chat, so I'll just talk if that's okay. Thanks, Lori. Um, I, I don't allow them to start conversations. I've not had issues with it, but they are able to communicate directly with me. I just make sure that I hide notifications at the very bottom if you scroll down. And, or it's right there at the top, I guess, the hide what they're able to see so they don't see everything that when you post a something it just shows up on that stream and it just gets to be really really long and yes. um so i just hide notifications and then that's all they see is whatever i've typed in the stream um Yes, and so, and I, and I, and I will, we, we, I have that in ours, and so we can have that as a, an example. Um, so you let them post and comment. Um, Gary says you've muted um, um, chat for individuals, and then Whitney noted um, that they let them because they were lonesome and wanted to communicate. And so, yes, and so if we look at the class that you guys are currently in, um, And we look at the stream. Um, I've I, it's set up so students can post and comment, and then um, like Lori noted, I have it so that the assignments post on there too. Um, it can get really out of control really quickly, um, and so I will um, um, I will. <sighs> Um, 
hide those because that notification is like one notification too many. Um, if you, if I wanted just to have everybody forced to comment in the, you know, in the, what I posted, I can set my comments so that the students can only comment, meaning that you guys can only comment when I make initial posts. Um, you can also set it up so that the teacher can only post or comment. Um, but that really, it makes it hard to have that, that um, communication going on. Something that, I mean, this can be something that you can change. And like Gary said, you can mute an individual and we'll look at that. Um, so Lori mentioned classwork on the stream. We currently have it set so that you're seeing condensed notifications. I hide notifications. So that is one of the settings that I make there. It's hide it, hidden, Ugh, hide it, that's horrible. Um, and then show deleted items, what does that mean? If I have show deleted items on, and I'm gonna click on save now. And so when we go back to my my stream and I refresh this, you're going to see it's it's cleaned up a little bit. And so um, the assignment that I posted is no longer there. Um, I can see deleted comments. And so I really, okay. So I'm just gonna say hi real quick and post it. I can delete this. And so I can delete any one of you guys if I need to. Um, and so I see that it's deleted because I've turned on that deleted comment um, option. So one of the things that can be really, only the teacher can see this. And so if you do have a student that's posted something inappropriate, you can delete it. And then um, you can turn on that setting to show the deleted to be able to come in and say, okay, we're going to have a conversation about this. Um, this is what's, you know, going on. And so um, that can be really positive as, as you're looking at that. The other thing, and Janelle, I'm not going to mute you, but I'm going to model this. Um, you can, um, I can mute Janelle on the stream. Um, and so I can do it right away. So if I see something inappropriate, it's not like I have to um, go into settings or anything. I can just click on the three dots and mute away. So the, the stream can be such a great way for that communication and um, collaboration. All right. Julie, can, you say, can you say again where we find those controls? Mm -hmm. So the settings are in your classroom. And so if you're in as a student, you're not going to see them, um, but they are in your classrooms. So in the upper right-hand corner, you have the, your, um, right next to the waffle, you should see a gear. And that is where, so you see the gear up here. So I'm gonna go back to my settings. Um, so another thing, so um, you guys do not have turned on the parent notifications. Um, and so Tim, that may be something you might want to enable is parent notifications because that will be something that um, if you have parent notifications on and you add their email addresses, then they will get notified of um, missing assignments, assignments, and announcements that you've posted on the stream. You will not get any of the student um, conversations or you can't see the students work, but you can get kind of the, the, the facts of the class. Um, so parent notifications can be really positive in that this is where you control that also. Um, if you are choosing to use um, Google Meet, you can generate your Meet link here. You can also make it visible with students. I'm going to generate my link, um, but I'm not going to make it visible with students uh, because I will post the link in an assignment. Like we're going to meet at 10 o'clock on Monday and that will be where I would post that. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't know about at this point is, is the different grading options in the settings. And so taking the time to set up your grading in the settings can make your life so much easier. So you can figure out overall grade calculation. So you can do total points or weighted by category. Um, and so if you do weighted, you'll see that um, I can show the grade to students or not, but then I can go down and do categories. And so because I said weighted, 
I have a percentage. And so now I've, I've created my grading categories and the different percentage. Um, I can then also turn around and I can do total points. Um, and so I can say, okay, here's the default points. Um, and we can call it call it good. And so you have, um, it makes it a lot easier when you're making assignments to utilize your settings. So I'm going to save these settings for my, my class. So now when I go back and I look at my stream, I'm going to see, and I refresh it, um, I'm not showing the deleted posts anymore. Um, I, you know, so I can see everything that's happening in my stream um, and my, my classwork is no longer posted there. When I go to make an assignment, <clears throat> um, now I have grade categories over here on the right. And so I can say, well, this is a test. And so it defaults to 100 points. I can say it's a quiz and so it defaults to 25 points. So it really makes it a lot easier to organize your grade book. It also makes it a lot easier to um, set up your assignments. So those are your settings. Um, and so Cheryl, great question. Um, <laughs> The, um, do parents need a TZ account to see notifications? No, they do not. So I'm gonna show you the parent notification aspect on like a K-12 account, just so you can see what it looks like. And then um, if you turn it on in your, in your district. So what you see in your settings is you have guardian summaries and you can have that turned on and off. And so that is something that individual classes can turn on and off. When I look at the people, if I want to invite a guardian, all I need to do is type in a name or an email address and it does not need to be a K-12 or a TZTS um, account. It can be a Gmail, it can be a Microsoft, whatever. Um, so you just need to be able to um, type in an email. You can invite more than one guardian and so you can invite multiple guardians. The other thing that happens is say this student is in um, another class um, and that teacher has already turned on parent uh, invite guardians, um, those guardians will stay with this student. And so if this student is in six classes and parent and teacher A has already put in the parents or the guardians, then guardians will show up in all the classes that this is enabled. And so it is something that you could potentially coordinate and or um, just be really help, happy that your if somebody else has put your parents in. So yeah, but parent the guard the guardian notifications can be really positive for um, communicating with your parents and also um, just keeping keeping that communication those lines of communication going. All right, so in our previous, um, when Lori was sharing a little bit about the, the stream and the class settings, um, notifications came up and notifications um, are really important. So I've given you guys the help here for your notifications and this is for both students and teachers. And so this is something that you may wanna use as expectations for your students that they will get classroom notifications um, so that they know what's going on. Um, and then Ditch That Textbook um, provides really great resources and he has a, a, a blog post on setting up notifications and his website has been having issues and so like 50% of the time I can get in and 50% of the time I can't and he's working on it. He did chat me up so we're good. So we're going to go um, into our notification setting. And so um, I think Brian showed us how to find the hamburger menu earlier. So I'm going to click on the, I'm in my Google Classroom. 
I can click on the hamburger menu, which are the three lines on the left hand side of the screen. And at this point, I see my classes, I see um, archive classes, and then I see settings. So we're going to click on those settings. This is where you can change your profile picture if you want to. Um, but you can also scroll down and this is where we can turn on and off notifications. And so this can make or break your experience in Google Classroom. Email, um, you do want to receive email notifications. Um, you can control what you want. If you want comments on your posts, comments that mention you, private comments on work, you can turn those on and off. And then we have for classes that you're enrolled in and classes that you teach. And so when you're a student, you're going to see the classes that you're enrolled in. When you're a teacher, you're going to see the classes that you teach. Because you're, you guys are both, you're going to see both options. Um, I would recommend, you know, playing with this, seeing, you know, seeing what, how the notifications work um, and how crazy they get. And then you can turn this on or off. So if you're like, I can't handle any more notifications of, you know, resubmissions of student work or late submissions of student work, turn it off. So you do not need to have those posts on, um, those notifications on. Then um, at the very bottom of that page is where you get the class notifications um, and this is where you can turn on and off notifications for individual classes. And so this is something where if you have students that say, yeah, no, I didn't get an email about that. Um, they're going to want to check and make sure that they haven't turned off their notifications in general. Um, and this is something that that's that learner responsibility of you know, you're going to say, you know, make sure you have notifications on. If they're like, yeah, no, I don't want them. Well, th how are they going to learn? Or how are they going to get their notifications? Or how are they going to know? Are they just going to check Google Classroom every day? You know, what are they going to do? Um, if you are a co-teacher, so like special education teachers, um, uh, some, some, you know, specials, um, the, any, any of the teachers that will be pushing into classrooms, you're going to want to most likely turn off the notifications for a class simply because um, you do not need to know when all the kids turn in assignments, um, especially since you only have one student or two students in the class. So if you co-teach, you will most likely want to turn off notifications where you are not the main teacher. So those are your notification settings um, and, you know, kind of how to make that be a really successful experience. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to look at is how to archive and copy classes. And so this too is back on our hamburger menu. And we're going to look at, I'm going to go back to our classes. And we're going to look at the classes that we have in here. And I have um, a demo class here that I think I'll archive. Um, and so when you click on the three dots, you can um, get the, when you're looking at your tiles for your class, you get the different functionality that you can do. And so one of the things that you can do is you can, um, archive the class. When you archive the class, it makes it so that it removes it from your, your screen here. Um, only the teacher or the main teacher can archive this class. And so if you have co-teachers in the class, they cannot archive it, um, nor can they delete it. Um, if you um, are a student in a class, you will see when you click on the three dots, you can unenroll from a class. Um, and so if, if you are in a class, if you are, if you've taken a Google class and you want to get out of it, or if you're in some, one of your colleagues and you want to not be in it anymore, you can just unenroll. So the three dots is where we archive. Once I click on archive, it'll tell me that, you know, I can't update it. It's going to move to my archive classes and the files will remain in Google Drive. Can I ask a question that goes back to the beginning? Yep. Um, 
when you can, it, it seems to me like I can't enroll all my kids in one shot. They have to enroll themselves or get themselves into the platform. Is that true? So when I want to add students, um, I can click on the plus and I can invite students by email or name or email if I want to. Um, most of the districts that I work with really do join, you know, have students join the class using the class code um, because depending on the district, um, sometimes like your, your younger students won't technically have email. They'll be using the email address to log in, but the email is not turned on yet. And so you're not necessarily, so, so they don't, get an email, quote unquote. Um, and so most of the time, the districts that I've been working with do a, um, they don't invite students. They, they um, I can't think of the word right now. They do the join code. What I could do, um, I can take a list and I can paste it in. If I have a list of email addresses, I can drop that in there. Um, so if I have it, I can do that. Um, so that is an option that you I'm can just, do. I'm just trying to think of for for the younger folks that we work with. I could see you know, that an entire class period being taken up just trying to get them all into Google Classroom. Um, and so that is something, um, and, and you may, I mean, and to, to be honest with you, um, when you are, when we come back to school in the fall, taking time to make sure that everybody can get into Google Classroom is going to be one of the critical critical things. Um, whether you divide and conquer and or, you know, do four, four kids, you know, four kids a day or, you know, I mean, however you do it, um, practicing to log in. And so one of the resources that I'll post for you guys is how to use Google Classroom with Littles and some of the processes that you'll want to utilize for that because it is get once they're in um, so your littles can log in um, your littles can um, join the classroom they can do all that um, but even your big kids um, making sure that they can get in the classroom that they they can they understand where their homework is that they've practiced that um, is really important because it will not be successful if you're like We'll use this if if the if you know if we end up teaching from home, or we'll use this, you know, later because I just want to start teaching. It needs to be built into the whole whole process. So, and um, thanks for asking that question. Okay, so. So we're looking at archiving our classes and so I'm going to ping back over to my classes. So I've archived a class. Um, now how do I find my archived class? I can go to my hamburger menu again, click on archived classes, and then you're going to see that um, I have, um, I've got two archived classes down here, one that I was a student in, um, and then one that I'm a teacher of. And so I can um, restore this class if I need to, um, or I can delete it if I don't want it anymore. If I delete it, it means that the um, class goes away. I will not have any access to posts or comments, um, but the class files will be remaining in my Google Drive. So I'll still have the files, but I will not be able to access any of the posts or comments if I delete. So I can, um, I'm gonna go back to my classes. The other thing we can do is we can copy courses. And so if you have multiple sections of a course, I would recommend making your main course, setting up your topics, your grading, all that, and then copying it over. Um, what copies? You have your topics, 
your classwork posts will copy. They come over as drafts and your grading system. And so this is something that, I mean, rather than saying I'm going to set up the topics, you know, six times, I'm only going to set up the topics once and then I'm going to copy it six times. I'm only going to set up the grading system. Um, my settings come over. And so if I say I don't want posts on the stream, um, they'll come over. So you end up with a lot of resources. Um, you can save time by doing that. It can be a really good time saver for you. Um, I do not recommend copying last year's classes because it is a pain to get rid of assignments. And so here's a, here's a demo class with a bunch of different classwork in it. I'm going to have to see that all year. Um, and if I want to get rid of it, I have to delete each one individually. And so it isn't, you know, it's not like I can say I'm going to delete this whole topic. It, 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 so it's, it's not, um, it's much easier to create and reuse a post because then you can pull from any of the classes that you've ever created. So you can see here that even my archived class is there. Um, and so I can pull from any of the classes that I have, I have created. Um, so it's much, much easier to make a shell, copy it, and then reuse posts because then you can edit them than it is to have a class with a whole bunch of, of content areas in it that then you have to turn around and, and use. So things to think about as you are gearing up to go into Google Classroom. All right, so that's your notification settings um, and then your topics. And so I'm gonna um, give you the topic discussion and then we'll take a couple minutes to let you explore all these things and, and, and go into them a little bit more detail. Organizing your Google Classroom topics is a big deal. Um, and so Ditch That Textbook recommends you, you know, organize by week, unit, topic, file type, having some sort of structure. Shake Up Learning, Casey Bell, um, goes into it a little bit more into detail. And one of the things that I really like is she, she kind of encompasses, you know, lots of different classroom styles because we have not only elementary, but middle school, high school, and specials. Where, where are you getting that? Um, so when I'm on our resources on the setting up your Google Classroom, um, down under organizing Google Classroom topics, you have um, a couple of articles here. We're into the shakeup learning article. Is that in our Tios Cuisina? Yep. yep, it is in your, when we look at your assignments for this class. Um, when you're in the 001 assignment, you have this Google Classroom um, setting up. Oh, I see it now. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So this document, um, she models how you can rearrange your topics. And that is one of the nice things. I can drag and drop topics and rearrange assignments and do that really easily. Um, but then as we go on down, she talks about how you can organize your assignments. So one way is by units or modules. And so here she's got a, a social studies. Um, unit one is Civil War. Unit two is World War I. Um, and then you just add posts to that. You can organize by week. And so you may just want to have all your posts for the week um, together. You can organize by type of assignment. And so um, if you want to say, you know, here's your daily work, um, your bell ringers, you can organize like that. You can organize by subject area. And so this is really awesome for elementary school because as we go through, you can um, set up your topics for each of your content areas and they'll all be in one class. I also have seen elementary schools or elementary classroom teachers who have created a separate classroom for each. So language arts, math, science, and social studies has their own classroom. 
Um, and then the other thing you can do is to create a today topic. And so you would have that be at the top of your screen. This is what we do today. And then you could categorize them um, and move them to different topics later. Um, other suggestions are learning targets. Um, and she talks about dis disabling the notifications from the stream. Um, and then this is something that is, is a frustration um, and it's just, it's how Google Classroom is right now. Um, when we're in Google Classroom, you're going to see that all the assignments just stay there forever. They don't go anywhere. And so it doesn't matter, like this one is already due, you know, it's, it's everything, you know, they're just there. Um, and so you, if you want to make past assignments go away, you have two options. You can delete them, but if you delete them, it means you, you lose the grade and, you know, anything associated with it. Um, or you can use what Casey Bell suggests, which is creating a topic for past assignments. And so you could create the past assignments topic and then you can drag and drop um, content to the past assignment topic. And so this is a sample with lots of, lots of courses in it. I can make a new topic, past assignments. I can put it at the bottom because that's where I want, I don't want it to be at the top of my assignments. I want it to be at the bottom. And then I can drag and drop my assignments down there. So you have options um, if, if, if you want to, you know, kind of help organize your classroom. So that is one of the things that, that you know, your, your topics and how you set that up. And so when you look at the Google Slides, you are asked, you know, how you want to organize. Um, and so a lot of you have already filled that in, which is awesome. Um, but I would encourage you to re rethink that and make sure that you are, um, are, are good good with your how you've organized them um, so I'm going to give you guys just a couple minutes um, right now to go through some of those things the settings the notifications the archiving because many of you have old Google classrooms um, you can archive them if you are a student in a Google classroom for whatever reason you can unenroll yourself so you can go through and clean up your um, your Google Classroom page. Um, you can go in and set up your notifications, but I do want to give you a couple minutes to play around with this so that we can ask any questions. So go ahead, I'll stop screen sharing and we'll do. Um, so when you're posting those assignments, um, you're going to, um, material is stuff that um, you can, um, students can view or edit, but there's nothing to turn in and there's no interaction. Um, so that is what material is. The question is one of my favorites because um, Brian asked about how do you, you know, add YouTube videos to slides. Well, one of the questions that I get often is, well, how can I make sure that the kids have watched a video? And so I can post a question and I can say, what is the main point of this video? Question mark. Um, I'm going to add a video and so I'm going to go to YouTube and I'm just going to search okay so I'm not most of the time I'm going to have a video that I want to use but in this situation I'm just searching and so I say oh this looks like a good one it's 11 minutes I'm going to say add boom all right and so now I'm going to give you some additional instructions I'm going to say answer this question and then comment on two other students posts all right um, so now um, you see we have a short answer um, there is also a multiple choice and so I could do a real quick multiple choice if I wanted take away our points. Um, I'm not going to give this a due date. I'm not going to give it a topic so it can just float. And here I say students can reply to each other. 
if I don't want students to reply, I can uncheck that. I can also check if students can edit their answers. So once I post this, um, you guys are going to get a question that you can answer. And so I'm gonna ask this question. And the cool thing is, is you can't see what other students answer until you answer the question. So does somebody, one of my students want to share their screen so we can look at the question and see what it looks like? You guys have been really great about sharing your screens. Nobody does? Come on, you guys, real fast. How do I share my screen? Ah, uh, Jenny's on it. Thank you, Jenny. Okay, so Jenny, go ahead and click on the question. And so now you want to, yep, view the question. Uh, we're not going to watch the video. We don't care. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, you can watch the video. It's not a bad video. <laughs> um, so here's your, your question. Um, and so now what I want you to notice that that's our class comments. And so that is just the class comment that will go back and forth. Up in the upper right where it says your answer, Go ahead and type something in. And I, I'm, I'm not grading this. This is just more of a, an example. No comment. Okay. <laughs> so now um, you've turned it in. Um, it says you won't be able to make changes. That's okay. But now you're going to notice that you have classmate answers. You can see classmate answers in your answer window. You also can see it at the top of the page. You can see your answer and classmate answers. Go ahead and click on that. I'm curious if somebody's done anything. Yep. Okay, so you're the only student who's answered that question, but notice that um, the reply is there, and so other students, as they answer the question, will be able to see other people's responses and then um, respond to those and and you know have that conversation so this is a great way to not only check and see if you are um, if your students have watched the video so you can ask you know I mean you can ask more than what's the main point you know you could ask some other questions about the video um, and then you can also build that discussion opportunity so thank you for sharing your screen I appreciate that Okay, so that's the question. And then we have, I think, a couple more things on the assignment, and then we will let you go for the go for the morning. So do go through and kind of play around with the question just because it is a is a good good opportunity. A quiz assignment. Um, so guys, a quiz will automatically bring up a blank quiz. And you say in your head, but I have quizzes built in Google already. I don't want to use a blank quiz. I don't want to redo my work. That's fine. You can delete the blank quiz and you can add a quiz from your Google Drive. I'm not going to have any in my Google Drive because this is my, to my um, your account and I, I don't have hardly anything in here. But so you, you do not have to use the blank quiz. You can bring in your own. I'm sorry. Yes, I will fix it. I don't know how I can always misspell your name. Sorry. I'll fix it um, after I, so I've misspelled your name. I'm sorry, I will fix it um, as soon as class is over. Um, and then the last thing with assignments is the assignment. Um, and so when we do an assignment, so you guys have um, the sample assignments um, that we've, we've worked with and the default, you have to have a title. You can add in anything from your Google Drive. And so if you have files in your Google Drive, you can bring them in. Um, you can also um, bring in a link. So this is where anything that you can get a link from, you can add to your Google Classroom. Um, and so if you are using um, Khan Academy, if you're using um, anything that is on the internet, you can, you can bring it in. If you have computer or files on your computer, you can bring them in, you can upload them. Um, and so you can upload from your computer very easily. Um, and so you have that capability. 
and then you also can go to YouTube. And so like I modeled, I can search YouTube directly or if I have a URL, I can paste that URL in and it'll show me the video preview. So really easy to add content to an assignment. You can add as many things to an assignment as you want. And you're going to see that in a couple of the assignments that I'm sh I'll share with you is that you can, um, you can add um, a lot of different links and, it, and it's fine. And so it just depends on how you want, what you want to communicate with your students and how you want them to, to access that. So that is um, essentially this morning. Um, and so what will happen is I'm going to post some content area resources for you right after this class so that you have access to some of the resources there. Um, and then we are going to rejoin again this afternoon at two o'clock. And we're going to talk about just like how do we teach online and what are some of the things to think about. And that's where we'll look at utilizing Google Slides and how we can use those resources to um, best best um, work with our students. So any last minute questions before we wrap it up for the morning? Um, yep, I can stay for a few minutes after class, Brian. So yep, not a problem. I have a, a question about setting kids up initially. Okay. If I have let's say three two or three classes that I've created, so math and reading, can I set it up so that they have the same password in all, both of them? Um, so your students will log into Google Classroom using their email address and password, just like you guys. Um, if you want, when you if you're going to set up two classes, each class is going to have its own unique join code. Does that make sense? Right, which they only need to use once. But they only need to use that once. Yes, and so ongoing access. So, like when you guys come back this afternoon, you will be able to access this class. Um, just by going to Google Classroom, it'll be on your Google Classroom with all the other classes that either you've created or that you're part of. Okay. I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to think of ways to streamline the whole password situation. So in terms of passwords, your students really, all they are going to need to do is to be able to log in to their Google Apps account. And so that is the only username and password that you will, you should really need um, unless you have separate, you know, usernames and passwords for like your, some of your uh, curriculum resources. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions before we wrap it up for the morning? Fast question, if you don't mind. Nope. I see we're using Zoom. There's something called Google Meets. Because that has a unique password per class. Because I already, you know, went on try to look at them, and every class has their you their unique URL. Yep. Right. And so yes, so you Google Meets is another option, um, and so that's going to just depend on what you as a district or what you decide to use for your your online meeting platform. Um, each class will have its own URL. But the thing is, I mean, so like today, I've set you guys up so that when you, you know, you you clicked on a lot of links today, or you've had the right. potential to click on a lot of links. And so if I share the link to my Google Meet in my Google Classroom, the kids can click on that. So you can say everything is, you go to Google Classroom, you log in to Google Classroom, and then, you know what we're doing today is posted or what okay, we're doing for the see, week is posted. What would be easier for the kids zoom or google meets six of one half a dozen of the other so it makes no difference then it, it really they're they're really all merging into very similar functionality i like zoom for some of the functionality that it has um but meets and microsoft teams 
also has um, very similar functionality. So like we can ask questions and they can answer it with the yes and no. It makes no the, difference. So the yes, no is really only a Zoom thing right now. That's all I needed to know. Yep. Yep. If you yeah. want the yes, no, it's a Zoom thing. Um, okay. They have a raise hand option and or will be having a raise hand option in um, the meets and, and teams. Um, the, the, the challenge is, is they're all changing really quickly and they're all adding new things. Um, and so like while they may not have something today, they are promising to have those features either, you know, by the time school starts, early September or in, you know, in the fall. So that is something to, to know. Um, it is helpful to have two monitors if you are, are managing all of this. It does make life a little easier if you have two monitors. Uh, two monitors. <laughs> <laughs> <Two>, I know. <laughs> and three is even better. <laughs> yeah, I had a teacher that had two monitors and too much. One monitor is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Rochelle, let's order some monitors. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so Brian, you had a couple quick questions, and so I can answer your questions, and then um, we'll wrap it up. So.